welcome back to Leah's Leaves. I did a pepper tally video a couple weeks ago. Today we're going to look at the tomatoes that made the final cut. Hello, Holly. You going to help me introduce our tomatoes to everybody today? So we'll start here in this grow bag. I have tomatoes growing in ground in five gallon buckets and in a variety of grow bags. Uh, I'm growing a wide assortment of tomatoes this year, different types, uh, some, some on dwarf stock, some micro tomatoes, some indeterminate tomatoes, and some determinate tomatoes. It's a little bit of everything. This, this grow bag here that has some basil in it and little marigold just started to bloom. This is a granny's throwing tomato. I got these seeds from Nikotovka Seed Company. You've heard me talk about them before. They are a Ukrainian seed company. I ordered these two weeks before the war started. I'm so happy to be growing a bunch of Ukrainian plants in my little Ukrainian victory garden this year, and this is one of them. Couple of pots down here. We'll just cross over here, pass some peppers. Look at the garden huckleberry. This is my first year growing huckleberry. I'm growing it in a kiddie pool because I didn't have any place else to stick it and so far it's doing great. Okay, in this uh, grow bag, this is a red pride tomato. It's a determinate variety, little, um, little slicer, six to 10 ounce red slicers called red pride. In this container, I'm growing a raspberry liana this is a determinate variety. It is starting to blossom, which is exciting. Come over here to the freestanding buckets. I use this little cluster of buckets to mark my parking spot. <laughs> In this pot is another red pride. And then I have a couple of dwarf varieties. This is a bogema. No, I lied. This one is an Uluru ochre. The dwarf Uluru ochre. The bogeyma is in a different bucket. This is a turgai. This is another dwarf tomato and also came from Nikitovka. I think both of those are, actually. I have a hanging basket here. Uh, little marigolds starting to emerge. And I think this is a tumbling tom. It might be a dwarf bahaha. The Tumbling Tom seeds I got from Seeds and Such, but the Bahaha seeds I got from Nikotovka. And I know I have a couple, uh, one or two of each plant scattered around. This is one of them, but anyway, it's doing great. I just set it out here in the yard so it would get a little more direct sun during the day. These are Tiny Tim tomatoes. They're not going to grow more than 18 inches tall, and they're already flowering. I've grown these before. They're just a little micro tomato. They're in with my herbs. Here in the clawfoot tub is, this is definitely a tumbling tom, and take a look at all of the blooms. This thing is gonna be popping with fruit very soon. This is a dwarf bahaha. Again, Nikotovka seed. They're a cool little cherry tomato plant that will bush out and really fill up and kind of spill over the edges. Up here on a little herb shelf, I have this is a red robin. That's another little micro tomato and it's flowering, getting ready to fruit. Now we come to the vertical bucket garden. This is where I have a bunch of dwarf tomatoes and peppers. Down here is a mandarang moon. It's the only one, this one and the Russian apple tree behind it are the only plants in the whole garden that are so, showing signs of a little bit of disease. So I'm just gonna pull these leaves off. The plant doesn't need them. Remove any diseased spots. Dwarf mandarang moon. This is gonna be a dwarf tomato plant that grows white tomatoes. Behind it, is Russian apple tree. Behind that is another dwarf Uluru ochre. 
Over here will be like a yellow orangish tomato called a Wero Kawai. It isn't quite blossoming yet, and neither is the marigold, but it's close. In this bucket, look at that beautiful, beautiful, stocky. This is a purple rain tomato. It's already starting to blossom. Got those seeds from Baker Creek. And here are the Bogema. This is also from Nikotovka Seed Company. I have been most impressed by the seeds that I got from the Ukraine this year. And especially this Bogema. I had 100% germination. And the plants are so healthy and so uh, thick and solid. Like nothing can blow them over. They're all flowering. There's no sign of disease. They've been disease resistant the whole season. I've just been very pleased overall with uh, the Bogema tomato specifically and my Nikotovka seeds in general. Now we'll visit the green stock because I have a couple of tomatoes here. Believe it or not, I have this Pendulina orange micro tom growing in one pocket and a red robin growing in another. And look here, we have some fruit developing. This is probably going to be the plant that fruits first that I'll be harvesting from earliest looks like. There's a little tomato here. This is called Native Sun. This was also from Nikotovka. It's a yellow tomato, yellow slicer. I sow these seeds late so it's getting a late start but it's catching up. It'll be fine. Next to it I have Cherokee Purple. Next to that, black strawberry, which is a type of cherry tomato, one of the indigo varieties. And I already have some, let's see if it'll focus in there, some fruit developing. Cool. Next to that, a ponderosa red, one of my favorite uh, all-purpose big red slicers. Had to have one. Next to that, these next two are Crimson Giant. These are the old seeds that are being revived by M.I. Gardener. I sowed four seeds at first. I lost one. I sowed the fifth seed later. I kept two. I gave one to my uncle uh, two doors down from me and one to my other uncle who lives in town. So we've got four out of five Crimson Giants growing, or Giant Crimsons, excuse me. Uh, more blooms. This is the lychee tomato. They have the most beautiful little blooms. Their blooms look a little bit like moonflowers or balloon flowers. They're just so pretty. This is in the Solanaceae family, a nightshade like a tomato, but it isn't strictly a tomato. And if you look carefully, you'll see the thorns. So if you're looking for a deer resistant plant, rabbit resistant, this is a good one. Oh, and this is exciting. The very first bloom on the younger lychee. This lychee was sown a couple weeks later than the other one and it's starting to catch up. That's great. And finally, this is a Heinz classic processor. Uh, I live in Western PA, so Heinz is a big deal here. <laughs> so I'm growing proper Heinz tomatoes. And I'm going to try a recipe for um, homemade uh, ketchup that I uh, uh, Living Traditions Homestead, Sarah over at Living Traditions. I'm going to try her ketchup recipe this season. And I want to be able to use Heinz tomatoes to do it. <laughs> I mean, nothing will ever be exactly like Heinz. And if you're from Western PA, you know what I mean. Like it's Heinz or nothing. But anyway, that's a total tally of this year's tomatoes. I do have a De Barrio Royal, Royale, not sure how to pronounce that. It's a, it's a small pink slicer and a pink ox heart, which is a large, uh, large ox heart shaped pink variety. And only yesterday, a local friend um, gifted me with a couple deep containers. So I just need to dig through the compost in my truck. <laughs> to shovel out enough compost to fill those two containers and I can grow those two tomatoes. It's not too late. I've been keeping them uh, watered and they're in uh, red solo cups right now waiting for a home. 
Oh my goodness, I just looked up and I forgot one. Hang on, we're gonna go one more spot. I forgot, there's a Thorburns terracotta growing in this, um, what was the bucket for my strawberries. <laughs> it's coming along nicely. It's another one that was sown late in the season, but it's healthy, it's doing fine. I have some onions and radishes planted around it to try to keep some pests away. I also have these tomatillos planted. These are pineapple tomatillo. And I've sowed two. And I'll have to thin to one because I don't there's not enough space for all four to grow. So I'll just grow two. I'll um cut the stem of the smaller one down to the ground and just leave this one to grow. And then this is a mystery tomato. I know I documented it. I just have to go back to my journal and look it up. This was one that I planted as an afterthought. I know for a fact that it's an, a determinate variety. It might be Ace 55, but I'll double check for sure. Anyway, it's a tomato, which means more food, right? <laughs> so that can't be a bad thing. <laughs> anyway, that's my tomato tally as of right now. And you know me, if I find a bucket or a hole in the ground to stick another tomato, you know I'm going to. Uh, anybody else plant so many tomatoes that you were like, I'm going to plant all these tomatoes, <laughs> and then you ran out of space? Uh, I do that every year. I did plant another couple, uh, other varieties, but those were for family. So I know that I gave away a couple of Oxheart tomatoes and some cherry tomatoes, sweetheart cherry tomatoes, and what other variety? Some of the Ace 55 I gave away, more of the Ponderosa Red. Um, the, one, the one that I have been keeping alive that I'm hoping to find a spot for, and maybe with these new containers I received, I just need to do it was a gargamel. I really wanted to grow gargamel tomatoes this year. I got the seeds from Nikitovka. I had also um, gotten some from Joe Koslowski over at Garden State Gardener in one of his seed of the month clubs. And so I sowed two of each and all four of them grew. So I did find a home for one of my other gargamel, for the other gargamels, but I kept one for myself. I just don't have a spot to put it yet. So, well, oh, one thing, I'm going to take you back to the in-ground space. Hold on. This is what happens when we start talking about tomatoes. I suddenly get all these ideas and you guys get me all excited about it. This, these were all cool season crops. I got purple bok choy, a michi healy cabbage that never headed because we had hot, we had cold, then hot, then cold, then hot. So it just bolted. And then these are spigiorella lisio, lisia, which are basically broccoli greens. Get off of there, you stupid... The white moths just, or the white butterflies just started to show up. They'll start laying eggs on my brassicas if I don't take care of it. Anyway, all of these, there's just not a whole lot of food here. There's basically enough for one good stir fry, one or two. So in this in-ground patch, I think what I'll do today, since I have the day off and can do it, is go ahead and cut all of those back. I'll leave the beets that are in the front and the herbs that are around the edge. I have some spring onions, calendula, and uh, lemon cilantro growing around the edges and golden beets on the other side. Pull those out and I can fit two tomatoes here if I strategically prune them up a single stem so that they don't occupy too much room horizontally. So I think that's what I'm gonna do, which means I'll put my gargamel tomato in here and maybe my pink ox heart. What do you think? Leave a comment telling me if this is the kind of stuff you do in your garden. You're like, if I rip that out or if I move this or if I scooch this over, or maybe I can just fit one more in there between <laughs> those two plants. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, we'll give it a shot, okay? I'm learning a lot sharing it here and I hope you'll come grow with me. Uh, looks like I have a good dinner on my hands, doesn't it? Bye for now.